Hey, it's Alex with alextucker.ca, and welcome to my phrase review. Uh, now, phrase.io, also known as phrase SEO, is a search engine optimization research content creation tool as well as a uh, AI chatbot tool. But today we're going to be looking mostly at the uh, content creation, optimization, and organization aspects of it. Um, in some future videos, I think we'll probably take a look at how to set up the uh, the AI chatbot, but I haven't actually done that on my own website yet, so it wouldn't be something very easy for me to walk you through right now. Um, but what I really love about Phrase is the uh, the content creation and research and optimization tools. It saves me a ton of time and effort when it comes to um, researching topics, getting the information that I want, and understanding what my competitors are doing with their articles. Um, because a lot of the information that you would traditionally have to go and look at each competitor's article for, you can just get it all in phrase. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, let's take a look at my computer screen and I'll walk you through my phrase review as well as how I like to use phrase in order to create and optimize my SEO content. All right, let's go. All right, so here we are looking at the phrase dashboard. Uh, I'm probably going to blur this area out because I don't want to show you exactly all the articles that I'm working on right now. But right here in the middle, uh, we have my feed, which is all of the most recent articles that I've used. Over here on the right, we've got the new document button, which we're going to use in a moment. But first, I'll just explain what's going on on the left sidebar. Uh, this is uh, the button that takes you back to the phrase dashboard. Uh, if I click on content, that takes me to my content library where I have a bunch of different folders with different documents in them. Um, if we go to answers, this is where you can set up the, uh, the AI chatbot, which uh, just to briefly explain that, it actually crawls your website and answers people's questions based on information on your website. So it's not just going to give them any generic information, it's going to give them the answer that you would give them. Uh, at least in theory. So I haven't used that yet, but I'm really looking forward to working with it on my website at some point. Then if I go to settings, uh, that's where I can adjust things about my account. Um, releases is all the updates. As you can see, it opens over here on the right side and they have a lot. Uh, they're constantly updating this thing. Um, it's almost to their detriment to the point where it's hard to keep up with all the updates, but uh, they just keep improving the tool and uh, I really appreciate that as a customer. And then if you click on get started, it opens uh, some tutorials in the same way. And uh, if we click on help, that opens their uh, help desk in a new tab. So let's go back to the dashboard and we'll just click on new document. And so I have the option here of creating a new document or optimizing existing content. I pretty much always just go with create a new content because uh, optimize existing content involves pulling something off the web into the document. And that doesn't always work perfectly. Uh, regardless of what tool you have, sometimes something will get screwed up and you'll end up with some typos or something like that in the, in the text. Uh, so I just always like to copy and paste it and create a new content if I'm, if I'm using an existing one. Uh, or of course, if I'm creating a new article, then I just start with this. And then the search query is your main keyword. So I'm just gonna do phrase review to be a little bit meta. And if I click on the plus over here, I can actually add additional secondary keywords, but I'm just gonna leave it at one for now. And then in here, uh, I can change the folder. I'm just gonna leave it on general for now. And then if I open up the advanced settings, uh, I can decide whether I want the top Google search results or results from a specific domain. And I can decide if I want it to be focused on a specific country or focused in a specific language. But I'm not gonna worry about any of those. I'm just gonna say create document. So now what it's done is it's created a new document and it has processed the top 14 results for this search term. And as you can see, there's two tabs here. One is content brief and one is my content. So for the content brief, uh, this is where it'll fill in all of the research for me. And all I need to do is go to workflows and then say automate content brief. 
And over here, it's gonna ask me what I want it to include in the content brief. So do I want guidelines such as high level goals and what we're aiming for? Uh, do I want the people also ask section, which is uh, questions that it finds online that people are asking about this topic? Do I want the SERP results? Yes, I do. Do I want topic results? Of course. Um, I'm just gonna turn them all on. And I'm gonna say insert brief into editor. So this is just gonna take a moment to load it's pulling a bunch of information from all of the different uh, top ranking articles and kind of figuring out what they're doing and it's putting it all together for me in a nice little package. And if I want to, uh, what I normally do actually is I don't normally wanna go with the top 14 results because then I'm getting data from someone who's ranking 14th and 13th and 12th and that's not really constructive to me trying to rank number one. So normally I go to uh, here See, uh, and then I'll, it's actually got 19 sources selected, but I guess it was only using the top 14. I'm just gonna say top 10. And then if I scroll down a bit, I can uncheck a few more. So I don't want Trustpilot or AppSumo because those aren't actual reviews. And I don't want that one. Don't want that one. All right, so now we've only got mostly actual phrase reviews selected. So I'll say save. And I'm just gonna automate the content brief again. So it's gonna replace the existing one. All right, so now if we look right here, uh, it's, it's left me a place to fill in my goal, my target audience, my deadline, and the project owner. So if I was giving this, uh, this content brief to a writer to do this for me, then I could write their goal, I could write the target audience, I could write a deadline, and I could write their name. And of the top six results, it's determined that the average word count is about 2000 words. Uh, and if I look over here, I can actually see the exact word count of each article. Uh, it looks like the top ranking one has over 3000 words. Uh, this one has over 4000 words, but this one is under 2000. And this one is very short, it's not really a review. This one is about 2000 words and this one is under 1000. So there's a bit of discrepancy there, but basically it looks like a 2000 to 3000 word article would about fit the bill. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add 2000 to 3000 right here. And it's saying that the tar target number of headings is seven. Uh, I could probably get away with having as many as 10. And then underneath of here, it's got a bunch of information from the search in engine results pages. Um, it's got the top 20 topics that are being used. It's got popular headers that I can potentially use for inspiration. And it's got questions that people are asking on this topic, as well as um, statistics related to it. Uh, so basically authoritative sources that people are linking out to from their reviews. And that's the same thing that's going on with external links basically. Um, so this is really, really useful stuff um, because when I'm creating my document outline, when I'm deciding what I want to use for headings and subheadings, uh, it's going to be really, really handy to have uh, the questions that people are asking and the headers that other, right, that other uh, search engine optimizers are using in their stuff. So I've got that just sitting there that I can reference anytime that I need to. Then I'll go over to my content put in the title and then I can just start writing right here or I can uh, work in a Google Doc and copy and paste it back and forth. Um, and then if I click on topic score, it's actually gonna give me a percentage score based on how well I'm covering all of the most popular topics used by the existing ranking articles. Um, so let's see if I start writing this phrase review will answer all your questions about the advanced SEO tools created by phrase.io. So I, I obviously I was kind of keyword stuffing a little bit there just so that you could see what happens, which is uh, as I write in, so for example, as I wrote the word uh, tools, in here, now it's telling me that I've used the word tools once, it's telling me I've used phrase uh, twice, once in the heading and once right here. 
And I've also used phrase review, which is uh, something that it wants me to use only once, but it's okay with me using it twice. Now, if I were to use phrase review another few times, probably even once more, or twice, yeah. See, now it's gonna turn red, and that's letting me know that I'm using it too many times. Uh, I'm overusing the topic for the length of content. So if I were to write a ton of other content, it might be okay with me using it four times in a much longer article, but in a content that's only 21 words long, which incidentally, anytime I wanna know how long it is, I just look down here in the bottom left corner and it just constantly updates the word count. And so this is just gonna let me know if I'm overusing any topics. And then up here on, on this topic menu, I can actually use this drop down to show me only header topics or only uh, topics I haven't filled out yet, or only uh, topics that I'm overusing, or all topics, or uh, whatever, basically whatever breakdown that I want. And of course, in this uh, sidebar, I've also can go to the questions. And then if I, uh, so if I see a question, I wanna kind of explore how that question is used in the content, I just need to click on it and it'll open and uh, just kind of expand and give me more information. And it's the same thing with uh, people also ask. So this is, uh, people also ask is a Google feature. So that's, I guess, something that people are searching is how to use phrase. And by clicking on that, I actually add it directly into the document. And then we've got questions from the SERPs, questions from Quora, questions from Reddit, and we have uh, related information. Uh, there's just a ton going on over in this sidebar. I don't really use all of it that often. I mostly use phrase for what I've shown you so far. I use it to really quickly research a topic, and then I uh, just as quickly figure out all the keywords that I wanna use, figure out what subheadings I wanna use, figure out how long the content needs to be, and then I'm able to just start writing, uh, usually within five to 20 minutes of starting to research the content. I have all the information that I need, and I just need to actually put the words down and uh, make them as well optimized as possible. All right, that was my phrase review. I hope you found it helpful in deciding whether or not phrase is gonna be the right tool for you. Uh, if you do wanna try it out, I'd really appreciate it if you use my affiliate link, which is in the description, and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've ever used phrase or if you've ever used any similar tools, what you think of them, and what you think of the future of SEO is gonna be all about. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.